So a while ago I had to make a decision and find a cross-browser testing tool uh, because I wanted to do some cross-browser testing and I found that there's so many tools out there and it's really hard to make a decision. So that's why I wanted to make this video to compare two tools that I found especially interesting. So Lambda test uh, versus cross-browser testing. Um, Lambda test is a fairly new product um, developed by a startup while cross-browser testing is a bit more mature. Um, you might notice that I'm not covering the uh, market leader which is browser stack and that's why that's because uh, cross-browser testing is quite similar in its features but it's it's a bit cheaper in certain price tiers. So like I said Lambda test is a, is a quite new product but it, for that, for the fact that it's quite new, it's already very feature rich um, and it's also cheaper. And the main difference between the tools is that Lambda Test is running only with um, virtual devices, so all the testing is done on virtual machines, while cross browser testing has uh, more traditionally uh, real devices. Um, which obviously is more difficult to sustain the infrastructure for, which is why the tool costs more. So I think in the past, real devices was definitely the choice um, to get the best results for cross-browser testing. But now I'm not sure anymore. I can't really, I can't really see the downside of using virtual devices because it's it's cheaper. Uh, also, it will be easier for Lambda in the future to set up um, virtual machines in different parts of the world which means you will be able to uh, test from different virtual devices um, test the applications what they actually look like um, surf to different locations in the world which I think they have on the roadmap and that's something that's really difficult to achieve for uh, real devices but anyway if you have any strong opinions about virtual versus real devices, please let me know in the comments. Uh, what else? So they both have really good browser coverage. Uh, Lambda test has uh, includes Yandex, which is one of the main browsers in Russia, while cross-browser testing includes UC browser, which is big in China, if you are testing for those countries as well. Apart from that, they have all the usual browsers like Safari, Chrome, um, Windows browsers, etc. Lambda test has a lot of integrations for bug logging, so an insane amount of uh, tools like Slack, Asana, etc., where you can take a screenshot and then log a bug directly in your tool. While cross browser testing has also some of these um, integrations, but is more heavy on the integrations with uh, testing frameworks like Cucumber, Protector, etc. Um, the standout feature in cross browser testing for me is the record and replay, where you can actually you can log into the uh, web interface and then record it, your test, and then you can replay it later. And the the cool thing about this is you can replay it. Um, in parallel on several devices so you don't need to do all your manual testing. If you don't have automated tests you don't uh, need to manually test every single browser but you can record your test once and then replay it across different devices. Um, yeah on top of that if you want to implement automated testing then both of the tools support that. It's quite I haven't tried it out, but for Lambda test it's quite new, it's in beta, uh, while cross browser testing I'm assuming it's more mature, but I haven't tested it out. Uh, one more thing, Lambda test has a really low threshold of entry, they have a free plan, so you can test for 60 minutes per month for free, while with cross browser testing you have a free, you can sign up for a trial period, I think it's 14 days, but then after that you will have to pay although they have a freelancer plan which makes the entry quite cheap as well. Um, okay, so let's take a quick look at what it looks like to use those tools actually. <coughs> Starting with Lambda test actually. So we're going to take a quick look at the real-time testing and the visual testing here. 
So let's do, let's take a mobile device. I'm gonna take an iPhone 8 and start a test. It's loading. Okay, well that is setting up. I'm actually also going to start a live test already for in cross browser testing so we can compare. <clears throat> Alright, now we're in Lambda test and let's get rid of the cookie message. So this is my website that I'm testing. Um, bit slow to respond, but some of the cool features here are Marcus Bark, like I said, we can uh, log into your favorite tool like Slack, including a screenshot. You can take a video, uh, you can paste your content. Um, so, if you logged into a virtual device and you, you need to copy and paste something, for example, a URL or a piece of text, then you can paste it in here first and then you have it in your device and you can paste it a in any input field here. Um, having said that, cross browser testing has exactly the same paste tool and also video capturing. Uh, another cool thing here is you have dev tools, which is also something that both, um, both platforms have. So this is uh, opening my Safari inspector here so I can go into the console and if there were if there were any outputs or errors, I could see them here. I'm going to close that again. Um, yeah, so that's it for the overview here. Let's start that. There's also a Chrome plugin for both of those tools actually, where I can, if I'm on a website that I want to test, then I just open the Chrome plugin. Say, okay, I want to. Now I want to test Opera on Windows 10, start a test. So both Lambda test and uh, cross-browser testing have that. Cool, so let's give it a go. This is the live testing, cross-browser testing. Oh, I feel like something has gone wrong here. Let's start it again. That was not good. Uh, Let's take a, an iPhone again, same device, run test. Okay, let's get rid of the cookie message again. <clears throat> so, and here we can see for this particular browser and device combination, there's actually no dev tools, but usually you will have the same option to open your dev tools. And also, they usually, in cross browser testing, they have a nicer integration where you can see the dev tools stuck to your the bottom of the window, so you don't have to drag around the window as I just did in Lambda test. And you can take a video here as well, and you have the pasting your text tool. All right, so it's okay. So the next thing is uh, screenshot view, which I really like in that both of the tools have. I'm gonna enter my URL here again. So let's. Actually, I'm not going to start a, t a screenshot test because it's taking time. I'm just going to check the results of a test that I did previously. Um, so here we have some browsers that I checked uh, before starting the test to take screenshots in. And I can set one of them as a, a base browser and then compare... Um, compare all the other screenshots again against that screenshot which is something that I really like and it's very it's a very nice user interface so let's start with this 
So this is the base that I just set, and now I can just scroll down and see them in parallel. And yeah, this is really nice. Um, Lambda test unfortunately does not have that because their product is newer. Um, one thing here, you can see that the cookie message is repeated several times. Even though I believe when I did the test, I checked that static elements should not be repeated, but this doesn't seem to work very well. Let's take a look at this. Is I stopped the test, but it's still running. So let's go into the visual testing here and. this let's start okay so I did previously take a test I did previously take screenshots but now they seem to be gone which is concerning so I'm going to start a new test here While that's running, as I mentioned, both tools have automation. However, this is in beta in Lambda test. So, well, actually, they're gonna, it's not launched yet, so they will notify you once it's there. Um, Cross browser testing already has automation. While we're taking the screenshots here, and now it's gone. So that's slightly annoying. I started my screenshot test, but now I'm not sure how to see the results. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to start one more. And I'm not going to change the window. Sorry for the back and forth. So here, I mentioned in cross browser testing, my favorite. Um, favorite feature is the record and replay. Um, sorry. So this works the same as the live test, so it's going to connect with the device and then I can record my test in one device a browser connection and then I can later replay it across other combinations okay let's keep it really short that's it script name test one okay, script that was okay although I don't know if the replay will work so it's showing me the recorded steps here as well and I can edit them, which is great. I think there was an option to yeah, to edit the selectors as well that it's got recognized. So if I think that my text will change I can perhaps use the the ID of an element instead. So that's great. I didn't change anything, cancel. And now replay script. select a browser to replay and now I can replay it in so I recorded it in Windows so let's replay it in Mac and Safari and see what the outcome will be and I can watch the replay but I could also just let it run in the background So that worked. The cookie message is, is gone. And now it's providing me with a video. So yeah, this feature is really cool. I don't, I can just, after I made a change, I can just replay the test that I recorded once and see if it still works, which is great for regression testing. Okay, so let's go back to Lambda test. My screenshots are ready now. Unfortunately, this is very is not very mature yet so I can open my screenshots look at them but I can't really compare them 
uh, there's a, a zip download to download all the screenshots but uh, that is it yeah there we go so here I can again the integrations with the tools where I can just lock this as a bug and just push the screenshot to a tool like Asana or Clubhouse or Jira okay. and here we can also see that the cookie message was is repeated close but what I actually wanted to show is that you can activate smart scroll here which should actually not repeat static elements and we can see that it is activated so I'm not too sure that doesn't seem to have worked but usually if you have a sticky menu at the top then it will not be repeated which is very great because otherwise you just have your screenshot where you scroll down and you see your, your sticky menu repeated um, many many times okay so this is it for my short demo um, so I can't make the decision for you but I hope this was useful for you to get an overview of these tools and I both really like them it just depends what your preference is Do, are you willing to spend a bit more money for a mature tool or are you willing to go with this and go with virtual devices um, one thing one more thing that I really like about Lambda is well because they are a startup they're really responsive to feedback so I've heard that they've added a lot of features recently just off the back of feedback that they got from the users so if you like that, then perhaps give Lambda test a go.